too close back up. If you want to attach a pattern to your wood temporarily and then be able to remove it after you cut it out, you spray a light coat of glue on only one of the two sides that contact each other, either the paper or the wood, but not both. Let it sit for a few seconds and then put them together. Here we are passing that knowledge on to our sometime apprentice and helper, Jaden. The plan for the station was published in Woodsmith Magazine. They also provide a downloadable full-size pattern of the handle, as you see here. There's more information and a link in the video description. Very good. Thank you. If you've never assembled a drill press, you may not know this. The spindle, the arbor, and the chuck are held to each other with nothing more than friction. They meet with cone-shaped ends which are tapped together with a hammer, and that's it. The user's manual doesn't explain why this is so. Our guess is that it's so that if the drill bit gets in a bind, the arbor can pop loose rather than having the machine twist itself into a knot or turn the workpiece into kindling. We're not sure why this happened, but when it did, we realized that we had changed the bit from a 5 16 to a 1 and 3 8 without adjusting the spindle speed, and we're assuming that was the problem. That's what holds it there. We didn't get our glue quite right. It's supposed to be easier than this. There are a number of little pieces that make up the carriage assembly. It has a carriage plate, a stop, upper and lower guides, two mounting blocks, a disc and ring, a spacer block, pivot plate, and of course the handle. We smoothed every exposed edge with a 1 8 inch roundover bit. Most of the pieces are plywood, but the upper and lower guides, which lied on the resin strips, are the same red oak as the rail. On the first attempt at the disc and ring, we tried concentric circles. This didn't work for a couple of reasons. First, there was too much space between them, even using a 1 16th bit, which was the smallest we had at the time. Second, we used four tabs to keep it in place, two running with the grain and two against. Those running against were uncooperative, to say the least. On the second disc and ring attempt, we cut them separately and were able to tighten up the fit. We also did away with some of the tabs, maybe a few too many. And the second time, we got the fit we wanted. The carriage plate has slots cut on opposite sides that accommodate the metal stops at each end of the rail. It takes multiple passes to do this on the router, and the slots are different lengths. So the question was, do we set a stop and do one slot, raising the bit height a few times, and then reset the stop and do the second slot? changing the bit height again for it, or can we cut them both before changing the bit height? We decided to do the second option. A Craig flip stop fits the slots on the table saw fence. 
That would be the stop for the short slot. A block of wood would serve as a stop for the longer slot. A carriage bolt 3 8 inch 16 by 2 inch goes through the carriage plate, through the disc, through the pivot plate, and into a washer and lock nut to hold them all together. The head of the bolt snugs up in this 3 quarter inch hole drilled part way. A 3 8 inch hole goes all the way through. We set the rail and arm on the base temporarily to test the fit of the carriage assembly. We decided to mount the arm properly, although we would need to take it off later to finish the base. The carriage plate and pivot plate both have eye bolts for the spring. The disc mounts to the carriage plate centered on the bolt and the ring mounts to the pivot plate. Now it's time to shape the two mounts that hold the, the angle grinder. We'll set the mounts on the workbench and the grinder on the mounts. To see when the grinder's blade is parallel with the bench, we'll use a framing square and a couple of pieces of scrap wood. These pieces are exactly the width of the square's body and lined up with it on either, on either side. They have to be exact because we're going to clamp them in a vise and we can't have any play in the square.
It was at this point that we realized powering on and off was going to be a problem. In the comments for the demo video, several people suggested using a foot switch. And in fact, that's what we did. Thanks for the suggestion, guys. The fourth video in the series will deal with squaring the arm to the base and tying up the loose ends. Be watching for it. And if you want to get notification when it's up, hit the subscribe button. Hit like too while you're at it. And leave us a comment telling us what's on your mind. See you soon.